I knew nothing of Nathan Hill's The Knicks going in other than the fact that it made a bunch of year and best of lists and it was shortlisted for the Morning News Tournament of Books. And since reading it, it has supplanted version control as my personal favorite to win. Though to be fair, I've yet to read Colson Whitehead's The Underground Railroad. Now, I went in completely blind and all I had to go on was the cover, which is this desaturated image of a 70s protest with an American flag rising up above the crowd. And it sort of implies this pensive, airless reverie about the state of the American counterculture. And, well, maybe it is exactly that, minus the airless part. And maybe the idea of what counterculture is needs to evolve given our current reality. But regardless, what I read ended up being way more fun than what the cover implies. I love that this is a book for introverts in a post-truth world that we live in. Um, and I find myself doing that a lot with books lately, seeing them mirrored within the present context. And I guess that's sort of inevitable, um, having them filtered through a grimy Cheeto haze given our current timeline. Now, for the first part of the book, I found myself having to put it down repeatedly. It's like that first episode of Silicon Valley for me, where it was so cringe-inducingly accurate it veered into the painful. It is the tiniest of details that triggered this immediate and uncomfortable sense of awareness, bad decisions, painful self-consciousness, and peak social awkwardness in the face of those with a singular delusion of their God-given rightness. When the book opens, we're introduced to Faye Anderson Anderson. She's recently gone viral when a video surfaces of her throwing stones at a blowhard Republican governor and presidential hopeful. From there, we're introduced to her son, who's a failed novelist turned lackluster English professor and World of Elfscape online player. He's induced into writing a scathing tell-all about his mother. It's not really a hard sell because he's still bitter about the fact of her leaving him completely while he was still a weepy sixth grader. From there, we go to the 1968 Chicago protests, 1940s Norway and its myths, childhood friendships, obsessions, the Iraq War, and more. Hill even devotes an entire chapter to the rapid physical decline of an online gamer, which had absolutely no relevance to my Overwatch play, because unlike the character Ponage in the book, I can quit at any time, and I see no relevance in the need to punch pixels with other players in an online world that has you dreaming in frames per second with a twitchy mouse finger. Completely different things. The book is a mash note to introverts the world over, the overly self-conscious and anxious among us who can only watch as the brash, emboldened, and narcissistically focused grab the prize time and time again. I mean, what can we do in the face of that? What can we do when once again we're found holding the short end of the stick and feeling hopeless? I mean, the meek may inherit the earth, but right now the brazen and thoughtless are making an outright mess of things. Well, I think of an interview with Jade Chang in the LA Times, where she talks about how joy itself can be a rebellion, how living unapologetically can be an act of defiance. I like that. Fun fact, that was actually from a panel session called If We're Not Laughing, We're Crying, which was held at Book Riot Live, which I had the good fortune of seeing for myself. If that's not enough of an exploration of our current environment, Nathan pushes up against the idea of the news and its tendency towards sensationalism, how it can take small human moments and turn them into huge polarizing dramas, and how that's changed over the decades. I love this ambitious, multifaceted book that is jam-packed with ideas. Nathan Hill veers off into many, many directions, and he presents sentiments that he keeps prodding at like a loose tooth. This is a chunky book, but it is a timely read. Now, I was hoping to read more of the Tournament of Books shortlist before it kicks off officially in March, but I've been happily derailed by a spate of Korean authors filling up my TBR pile. I'm hoping to shoot a review of Pachinko shortly. So, there you have it. I hope you guys are having a great reading week, and we will talk to you soon.